In this problem, we're told a model rocket is launched straight upward with an initial speed of 50 meters per second. It accelerates with a constant upward acceleration of 2 meters per second squared until its engine stops at an altitude of 150 meters. A. What can you say about the motion of the rocket after its engine stops? B. What is the maximum height reached by the rocket? And C. How long after liftoff does the rocket reach its maximum height? D. How long is the rocket in the air? So there's a bunch of things we have to find, uh, but let's just draw what's going on here. So imagine this right here is our rocket, right? And so we know its initial speed, initial velocity is going to be 50 meters per second, right? And so it's going to travel upwards, right? Until it hits, a, uh, hits an altitude of 150 meters, right? And at this point, its acceleration is going to change, right? Because through this entire interval, its acceleration is two meters per second squared, right? Because the engine is powering it upwards. And then at this point, the acceleration is going to change, right? Because the engine stops, meaning there's no uh, boost in acceleration from the engine. So it's just going to be uh, the acceleration due to gravity now. So it's going to keep traveling upwards because the velocity is still positive. It's going to reach a maximum height, right? But its acceleration during this interval is going to be minus 9.8. And the reason that is is because uh, the engine's shutting off, so we just have the force of gravity, okay? So this is just what's going on. So let's just go ahead and solve. So first part A, what can you say about the motion of the rocket after its engine stops? Right, so I kind of just explained that, but after the engine stops at 150 meters, its acceleration is going to be 9.8, right? Because it's going to, engine's going to be off, so it's just the force of gravity now, but it's still going to travel upwards, right? Because velocity will still be positive, okay? So that's your answer to A. You can write that down if you want, but let's move on to B. So B, B, what is the maximum height reached by the rocket? So we know the rocket's going to travel 150 meters up this way, right? But it's still going to keep traveling, okay? So we have to find this distance right here if we want to find the total height, right? So how do we want to do that? So what I recommend doing is just, right, so we know this is 150 meters plus this distance. So we're going to treat this as an interval. So what do we know about this? So uh, if we write out the different variables, we know acceleration during this interval is minus 9.8 meters per second squared, right? So we know that. What else do we know? So we don't know the initial velocity, right? We don't know the velocity at this point, right? Because it's going to be traveling at some speed. So we don't know that. We don't know how long this is going to take. We don't know what it's going to change, and right, we don't know its change, but we do know its uh, velocity, right? Its final velocity. Well, how do we know what it is, right? So we know it's zero, right? Because when something reaches its maximum height, it's basically stuck in midair. Therefore, its velocity is zero. So at this point, its final velocity is zero. So uh, what we have to do is find, uh, right? So we can't solve this because we only have two, but we can solve for v sub zero by uh, using this equation, right? Because v sub zero is just the velocity here. And we can solve for it in this one and then plug it into this one and solve for the height here. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we want to find it here, right? So the equation, we have v sub zero, we have a, and we have delta, right? And we want to find v. So we're going to use this equation right here, right? So v squared equals v sub zero squared plus 2a times delta y, right? It says delta x, but we're going in the y direction. So v, right? We don't know. That's what we're solving for. So it's going to be the square root of all this. v sub zero squared, right? Uh, is just going to be the initial velocity, which is 50, plus 2 times a. a is just 2, right? So 2 times 2 times uh, the change in y. So the change in y is just going to be 150 meters. So, right, so let's just go ahead and solve. So you want to go ahead and plug this in your calculator, right? So do the square root of 50 squared plus 2 times 2 times 150. So when you do this, you're going to get V equals 55.6776 uh, meters per second. So now we know V sub zero, right? Because V sub zero is just the velocity here. So 55.6776 meters per second. And now we've got the variables that we can use to solve for the change in Y, right? Because this right here is the change in Y. So let's go ahead and solve. So we have V, right? V, or V, V sub zero, and A. So we're going to use the same equation, uh, right? So use this equation. Right, so v is going to be 0 equals v sub 0, right, 55.667, or 6776 squared plus 2 times a. a is just going to be minus 9.8 times delta y. So move this to the other side, right, so uh, minus 55.676 squared, right, it's going to become on the other side, so just square this number. So if you square it, you're going to get minus, about minus 3,100, or it's going to be 3,100 and then you move it so it's minus, times 2 times minus 9.8 times delta y, right? So divide by 2 times minus 9.8, right? So if you go ahead and do this, 
you're going to get the change in Y is 158.163265653. Right? So what you're going to want to do is just, I'm going to round this to 158. So if you want the more exact answer, just use this. But 158 meters is this distance right here. Right? So this is how far it travels during this interval. So we want to find the total. We just got to add it up. Right? So the maximum height is just this distance plus this. So 158 plus 150. Right? So max is equal to 150 plus 158 which is 308. So 308 meters, that's going to be the maximum height it reaches. Okay, so this is your answer to uh, B. Now let's do C. So C is how long after liftoff does the rocket reach its maximum height? So for this, we're trying to solve for how long it reaches its maximum height, right? So time, right? We're trying to find time. So since there's two different accelerations, we have to solve for the time in two different intervals, right? We have to find the time here the time here because we don't know what they are right and they're not going to be the same you can't just use one kinematic because the acceleration changes because you can only use these if the acceleration is constant so let's just go ahead and start with this interval so let's solve for the time here so the time here right we know the velocity right here is 55.6776 so we can use this equation right here v equals v sub zero plus a times t right so v equals v sub zero plus a times t so let's start with this interval so the initial velocity is 50. V is going to be 55.6776 plus A, right? A is 2 times T. So if we minus 50 from both sides, so do 55.6776 minus 50, you're going to get 5.6776 equals 2T divided by 2. And you'll get T equals about 2.8, or it's going to equal 2.83888 seconds. So this is going to be this time, right? This T, this distance. Now we got to solve for the time in this one. So use the same equation, V equals V sub 0 plus A times T, except for the acceleration is going to be minus 9.8, the time we don't know. V sub 0 is the velocity right here. So instead of it being the final velocity, it's now the initial velocity in this uh, interval. So... Uh, and then v, right, is the at its max height. And so the velocity at the max height is just zero, right? Because at its max height, it's basically in place, so it's at zero. Right, so v sub zero, we said, was 55.6776. So minus it to the other side. Minus 55.6776 is equal to minus 9.8 times t. So divide by minus 9.8. So do 55... 0.6776 divide by 9.8 you'll get t equals 5.68138 and so on and so we're going to add these two times up right because this is just the time for this interval right these intervals we have to add them up if we want to find the total so add this 2.8388 so i'm just adding them up and when you do this you're going to get 8. Point about 8.52 right so it, it's going to be about 8.52 seconds just depending on how you round so it's about that value um i use the more exact value when adding so it should be around this but just uh, make sure you plug in your calculator and check for it so 8.52 seconds right, it's going to be about that right so this is your answer to c okay so now let's go ahead and do d so for d what we're trying to do is find how long the rocket is in the air so what we know, we know how long the rocket was all the way up, right? But we're trying to find the total amount of time. So we have to find how long it was in the air uh, on the way up and then down, right? So we know on the way up, it was in the air for 8.52 seconds, right? And then on its way down, we don't know that. We have to find that. So we're going to use kinematics once again. But think about how this works. So throughout the first interval, right, this whole thing on its way up, the acceleration changed, meaning we had to solve for it differently. But the acceleration for the second part is going to be the same, right? The acceleration over this interval on its way down is the same. Right? Because it doesn't change, it's just falling straight down as a result of gravity. So A during this interval is minus 9.8. Its initial velocity, right, since it's starting from the top, we're going to say, is going to be 0 meters per second. Right? And the reason that is is because it's starting from uh, rest, because at its very top, it's basically in place. And then the change in the Y during this interval, right, its change in height is the total height, which we solve for, which is 308. So it's changing minus 308 meters. And so since we've got all these, right, we can solve for T. So the one we're going to use is... 
uh, this one right here, right? V sub zero, it has delta X or delta Y and then A. So we can just use this to solve. So I'm gonna erase what we have on screen so we can actually solve, but just keep in mind, or just pause it if you wanna write down whatever you need. So A equals minus 9.8, right? Uh, meters per second squared. And then we know that delta Y was minus 308 meters, right? And then we know that uh, V sub zero was zero meters per second. Right, and so what we're trying to do is go ahead and use uh, this equation, delta y equals v sub zero times t plus one half a t squared, right? So that delta x and delta y are interchangeable. But delta y is minus 308 equals v sub zero, which is zero times t is still zero, uh, plus one half times a, which is minus 9.8 times t squared. So you're just gonna wanna do 308 or minus 308 right so 308 or minus 308 divide that by this right here right so divide by one half times minus 9.8 so when you do this uh right so one half of minus 9.8 is 4.9 so 308 divided by 4.9 you're gonna get t squared is equal to 62.857 so square root this Right, and I'm actually going to square root the full value in the calculator. So it might be a bit different if you just square root the whole thing, or just this part, right? So square root this. You're going to get about t equals about 7.928, right? So I'm just going to round it to 7.93 seconds. So keep in mind what this was. The rocket travels up and down. So on the way up, we said it was 8.52, about. And then on its way down, it's 7.93, okay? So we just have to add these up if we want to find the total time it was in the air. So 7.93 plus 8.52. You're gonna get 16.45 seconds, and I'm just gonna round to the tenths place, so 16.5 seconds. That's gonna be the total amount of time it was in the air, right? So this right here is your answer to D, or the last part, so the rocket's in the air for 16.5 seconds. So yeah, this is your answer, and then previously I gave you the answers for the first few parts, but yeah, so hopefully you found this useful.